This video is sponsored by PCBWay. More on them later. Typical helicopters you see in the sky generate lift by spinning large rotor blades with an engine to push air down and lift a helicopter into the sky. An airplane, on the other hand, generates lift from flying at a certain airspeed, so its fixed wings can experience airflow over the top and bottom to thus create the pressure differences required for flight. At first glance, this may just look like a helicopter with a propeller in the front, but the biggest difference that separates this aircraft from any typical helicopter is that the main rotor head is completely unpowered during flight. Meaning in order for lift to be achieved, forward airspeed is required for the blades to spin, just like how an airplane needs forward airspeed to fly, which is what makes the gyrocopter a weird hybrid between plane and helicopter. The process of the blades freely spinning from the air entering the rotor system is called auto-rotation, and I've been wanting to explore more aircraft that use this concept for flight as I just think it's really cool. If you don't already know, my obsession for gyrocopters started way back, about a year ago, when I tried to build one. I was successful in creating a pretty cool looking scale model, but not so much a functional one. This one here was a two-bladed teeter rotor head with blades made out of aluminum flat bar and 3D printed pieces. And it definitely turned out looking pretty cool, but it turns out high RPM spinning aluminum and foam is not a good mix. After lots of testing and crashing, I decided to take a break on the whole project. And now we're back to the present, where I decided to give another go at building one of these aircraft that actually fly. So to start, I designed the whole aircraft in on shape. I typically design all my projects in CAD beforehand just to get the measurements and visual reference. But for this case, it's a lot more necessary because most of the body consists of 6mm carbon fiber shafts and 3D printed sections. Much different from my previous foam bodies. Originally, I was planning to remake the balsa blades for this project, but decided to use the old ones because they were still in relatively good shape, and also it's a pain to remake the blades. I began by printing these orange pieces with holes through them. These are used to secure the three carbon shafts into one body structure. After came the piece that secures the rotor shaft to the body and the piece that will hold the two servos for pitch and roll control. One important aspect with most gyrocopters is that since lift is generated by freely spinning blades, rolling will often cause the gyrocopter to drop very suddenly. That's why most of the turning authority comes from the rotor instead. And in some weird cases, you'll often need to roll in the opposite direction of yaw just to keep the rotor flat and level. Again, this isn't true with all gyrocopters, but it is with most of them, especially with RC models because their lightweight blades hold less spinning inertia. After making sure those parts fit well with the carbon tubes, I began cutting out the horizontal and vertical stabilizers out of foam board. Unlike most of my aircraft where foam board makes up most of the build, the only parts using foam for this project are the tail surfaces. And then to hold the tail onto the carbon tube, I printed these brackets that will secure the foam pieces. These printed parts here are for the rotor tilt mechanism that will allow the rotor to move. I made these parts quite robust to prevent them from breaking and connected all the joints with M2 screws. For the part that connects to the carbon rod, I added a hole on the side so that I can secure it to the shaft with an M3 screw, which is not only very strong and resists twisting unlike normal glue, but also makes it possible to make changes in the future. This part holds a 9 gram servo that will control the rudder, which then slides onto the carbon fiber tail boom, and then I soldered these Emacs servos into the dual servo holder for rudder control. As you would imagine, there's going to be a lot of force put on the rotor blades and rotor head while in the air, so for that reason I'm using these Metal Gear high torque servos to ensure I have full control over roll and pitch, and don't have to worry about the servo stalling. Now for the landing gear mounting, I took a pretty odd approach I never really tried before, which was to basically print the mount with line gaps which the wire would get hammered into, then I would drill holes on the side for zip ties. I had no idea if the zip ties were going to provide enough strength, but I was super happy with how it fit with the two carbon fiber rods. Here goes the receiver getting glued onto one of the 3D printed brackets, followed by the servo block holder thing and the motor mount. I got a bit lazy with the tail wheel and just glued it directly to the rudder, but this isn't ideal because it causes drifting and turns and is quite weak because all the weight is supported by the foam. And then right here I yanked off the servo holder and switched its position because I realized the rudder was placed too far back on the gyrocopter. I began doing some taxi tests on the grass because I was originally planning to take off from the field, but that was before I decided it made more sense to just fly from an actual RC runway. Yeah, no problem. It's a bit shaky, so I don't know about that rotor. One big problem I was foreseeing was that the propeller I was using was way too high pitched for my 1400 kV motor, and at the moment I didn't have any other propellers that would work any better so I was expecting some pretty frequent overheating. It was at this moment I realized it'd be pretty beneficial to have some aluminum heat sinks in my workshop, which I could use for future projects. So I got these high quality CNC aluminum pieces made by PCBWay, who is the sponsor of today's video. The best part about using their services is that even though my 3D printers are my most robust machines, which to be clear are still incredible and capable, PCBWay makes it possible to create items like these heat sinks in this custom carbon fiber landing gear plate, without needing thousands of dollars worth of machinery. 
It's basically like having access to industrial grade machines without needing to pay for them. Not only does PCBWay do 3D printing, CNC, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding services, as you would expect in the name, they primarily do PCB fabrication and assembly, which I'm really looking forward to be able to try out in the future. If you're interested in using PCBWay for your own projects or needs, click the link in my description to get a free $5 coupon. Again, thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Now back to the gyrocopter. To hopefully make the landing gear a bit more rigid, I printed this brace that would glue onto the landing gear wire. I purposely made this brace quite small so in case the gyrocopter were to crash or have a rough landing, the energy would go into snapping this rather than damaging some other part of the aircraft. To make it so the servos would actually connect to the rotor, I'm using these end threaded rods to connect to ball joints. But it was really tough to get the ball joints to screw on so I used a drill which worked pretty well until I got a bit too carried away and broke the ball joint. And after connecting the rods to the servos, we have full control over roll and pitch. One big misconception with these type of aircraft is how the takeoff procedure works. Most people believe it's similar to an airplane where you can just gun the throttle and pull back at a certain airspeed, but if you do the same with a gyrocopter, you'll probably end up like this guy. This is because rotor RPM and airspeed is crucial to line up on takeoff. If you try pushing your aircraft to takeoff speed while the blades are still spinning up, the blades won't have time to catch up in RPM lean to excessive blade flap. If you're wondering what blade flap is, you have to understand why all modern gyrocopters have a teetering head system. Just like a helicopter, gyrocopters need to account for asymmetric lift, which happens when one side of the rotor generates more than the other. This is due to the fact the rotor is spinning in one direction constantly, meaning one side is periodically going into the wind and one side going with the wind. With a rigid rotor system, the aircraft will just constantly tilt over on takeoff, so the tilting system allows the blades to flap up and down in the rotation cycle. However, when your airspeed is too fast for the rotor RPM, it leads to the blades to tilt excessively because they don't yet have the centrifugal stiffness that comes from high RPM. But even if you do have the sufficient RPM to take off, simply pulling back to take off like an airplane will lead to overloading the blades which can result in another crash. Unlike airplanes where increasing the angle of attack is crucial for lifting off the ground, all the gyrocopter needs is rotor RPM to lift off. So instead, the rotor is at its max tilt back position at the beginning to get as much airflow to spin up the blades. Then once at the correct airspeed, the rotor is fine to maximize lift and decrease drag. You can see this demonstrated as this guy flattens the rotor angle right as he lifts off from the water. But for my gyrocopter, I'm using three blades, not two blades. So to get the same effect as the teeter system, I'm using this 0.8mm fiberglass triangular plate connected to this bearing mount which should allow the blades to move up and down independent of each other. And with everything finished, it was time to see if this thing would actually fly. With the first flight, I really had no clue if this was going to work any better than all my previous gyrocopter builds, so my plan was just to take my time and use up the whole runway just to ensure the rotor gets spinning fast enough. I'm going to mute my voice here because I was going quite bonkers, but here's the general idea to how I was reacting. As you can tell, I was really stoked by the fact this thing was actually flying on the first try. It honestly just felt so surreal because I failed so many times at this project in the past. And hearing the sound this thing produces is truly magical. The sun is beautiful. For this being the real first time I actually flew an RC gyrocopter, it was truly a new experience for me. Most times it just feels like a normal plane, but there's just that mix of a helicopter feel. And in general, it's just more stable and forgiving compared to any other aircraft of this size. However, the more I flew, I could definitely tell that there were some issues with the rotor system. For one, there'd be random times during flight where the whole aircraft would just randomly drop and would require a lot more throttle to get back up. And second, it just didn't feel like it was sustaining its rotor RPM very well, and it definitely seemed like over time it was struggling to gain altitude. For the last flight I did this day, it was getting really windy, so I thought it'd be a good opportunity to see how it handles turbulent wind. And I was happy to see it really wasn't getting thrown around that much. The one thing I was concerned about was going downwind because I was afraid the aircraft would just lose a lot of altitude due to the decrease in rotor RPM. But I was surprised to see that all it did was just go a bit faster and the rotor RPM didn't really seem to be affected.
After those very successful flights, I decided to make a few changes. First thing I did was make a new fiberglass rotor head, because I was suspecting the current rotor head I was using was getting worn out from all the times I've used it in the past, so I was hoping fresh fiberglass would help the rotor performance. And after that, I went ahead and changed the whole tail wheel setup, because I could already feel the wheel getting loose and the entire thing just tilting while taxing, so I made sure that wouldn't happen again. And because the motor was overheating really badly, I switched to a lower KV motor with an optimal propeller. And because this aircraft flies pretty slow, this motor and propeller choice should be more efficient. Oh shoot, oh shoot. Oh! So that impact didn't seem to be that bad at first, um, but quite a few things broke. First of all, the propeller here um, is pretty much bent. This landing gear part has completely broke out of its mount, so I'm gonna need to somehow take off the motor mount for that and make a new one. Yeah, that is, that's not good. This tail part broke. Uh, looks like the wheels in the back is still fine. It's just that portion. And then this part with the servo arm broke too. <laughs> so that was definitely a bit of a bummer, but it could have been a lot worse if the bearing slipped out while the aircraft was much higher up. So I'm glad that didn't happen. I went ahead and printed a new bearing holding thing and also printed a new landing gear mount. This time I made it in two pieces, making it so it would clamp down on the carbon rods with zip ties, which should make it quite strong. Although it was flying, it was feeling way worse than before. It required so much more throttle to stay up, and the dropping issue was becoming way more pronounced. However, it was still manageable. But right here, as I began to do my final turn to land, I lost orientation and the whole gyrocopter just fell out of the sky. Somehow the only part that broke was the propeller, but I think the crash messed up the tail wheel because going in a straight line was basically impossible. It was at this point I was getting pretty concerned with how each test flight just seemed to get worse and worse. And even after analyzing the whole aircraft afterward, I couldn't get a real answer. One thing I did find was that one of the bearings in the bearing mount slipped out, so maybe it was causing some resistance. But ultimately, it just didn't seem like it would cause that big of a difference. But just in case it was a cause, I printed a new mount that made sure the bearings wouldn't move even if the glue were to wear off. After that, I resended the blades just to get rid of all the scratches and bumps, relaminated them, and also rebalanced them. And I also decided to switch to an even bigger propeller so I could get some more thrust. But even with those changes, the overall flight performance was actually getting worse, and it was even struggling to get off the ground. I began making tiny adjustments to the rotor blade pitch and even tried bigger propellers, which seemed to help a little, but its performance was still nowhere where it used to be, so I felt like I wasn't hitting the real issue. This flight here, I decided to use some smaller shims on the rotor blades so they would have one degree less negative pitch, and some of that made a pretty big difference.
Something you might notice is that the landing gear is shaking around a lot, and that's due to the unbalanced rotor blades. It would make sense that the shaking would contribute to the loss of lift feel, but when I first flew the dragcopter, it had the same unbalanced rotor issue, so it was unlikely that it was the reason for the much worse performance. All the shots you saw here were captured on my dad's Sony A7iii, and it simply made me realize I should probably get an actual camera for recording because the quality is a big difference. And right here, I made the mistake by switching the Y-shaped rotor head, which caused the rotor blades to barely produce any lift. Seeing how much different the aircraft flew with the changed rotor made me believe it was something to do with the fiberglass itself. So my plan was to try this 1mm fiberglass plate because it'd be a lot stiffer. But when I went out to go test, I forgot to bring it, and you'll see soon why I wasn't able to test out this rotor head in this video. I began flying some more just trying to observe anything that could possibly tell me the issue, but ultimately I was left pretty clueless. Something I found interesting during the course of all these flights is that one, the aircraft would require almost full throttle just to get off the ground, it seemed to have an altitude ceiling, where it could reach that altitude just fine but was unable to surpass it. Unlike my first few test flights where landing wasn't too much of an issue, now it always seemed like the rotor would just lose all its lift right as it neared the ground. I was planning to go back home to analyze the video, but for a final flight I decided to use this camera mount I printed earlier that would hold my run cam. And that flight didn't last long. This car seemed pretty similar to the other time where I lost orientation and it rolled over too far before I realized, but this time the whole thing was basically destroyed. The motor was broken again, one of the carbon shafts snapped, and some of the 3D printed parts broke. So I decided if I was going to do more testing, it'd be better just to rebuild the whole thing and start from scratch. So that's where part 2 of this project will start. After rewatching every video like 10 times, I made a pretty shocking discovery. And that was the fact the volume of the whipping sound the rotor produced at the beginning was slowly decreasing after each test flight, to the point where it completely disappeared. So this most likely has something to do with the rotor RPM or how much lift it's producing, but I'll leave this idea off for part 2. I like your camera. Thank you. If you enjoy these types of engineering projects and have stuff you build on your own you want to share and discuss about, I would highly suggest joining the Discord. And also if you want to support the channel, consider donating a few bucks to my Kofi, because these projects can get pretty expensive. Also if you want to see sneak peeks to future videos, follow my Insta to see some extra stuff I don't post on YouTube. Feel free to leave comments or suggestions as to things I might have missed or potential problems you're seeing because I would love to see your ideas. But yeah, that's going to be pretty much it. Bye!